The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels to gather his elect from the four winds, from the end of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches become tender and sprout leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gates. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. As we approach the end of the liturgical year, our gospel comes from near the end of Mark's gospel. Just before this, Jesus entered Jerusalem triumphantly, what we celebrate on Palm Sunday. He went into the temple and he drove out the money changers and those selling animals. Then he taught the last lessons he would teach as they were leaving the temple area, his disciples marveled at the temple buildings. They were struck by the huge stones used to build the temple. And Jesus said, a day is coming when it will all be torn down. Not one stone will be left upon another. This part of the gospel is a type of literature called apocalyptic not necessarily talking about the end of the world, but, but about an experience that would be called earth-shaking. The disciples, the first questions they ask are, when will this happen? And what's the sign that it's about to happen? Those are the questions we would ask. But they're the wrong questions. When Jesus talks about, in this section, he'll talk about wars and storms and earthquakes and signs in the sky. It's not really an answer. And he's mentioning things that are happening all the time. And then when he, to, in response to when it will happen, he says, only the Father knows. So anyone who claims to know is claiming to know more than Jesus does. Apocalyptic literature isn't claiming to predict future events. There are people who think it does, but that doesn't make it so. It isn't claiming to answer when the end will come or what's the sign that it's about to happen. Apocalyptic literature is intended to inspire people to live faithfully in the present. That's what all the Gospels are about. Jesus is showing us his way of going about life. It's his way of living in order to, in a way that deals with whatever may happen. It's living as God intended us to live. The way of Jesus is to love and to be merciful and to forgive and to serve. And it's to live that way no matter what we experience or how we are treated. That's the way God's elect live. We don't know when the end of the world will come, nor do we know when our end will come. The letter to the Hebrews isn't saying that Jesus will conquer evil and sin some point in the future. It's saying that Jesus has already conquered evil and sin. No matter what happens, we are loved by God. 
in Jesus, we are part of God's elect. And we are already saved 